next speaker, Dr. Eric Ben Arti, is also called Achik in Hebrew. Uh, he is what uh, we call a whistleblower. He exposed uh, irregularities, uh, accounting and governmental irregularities uh, in the US. And he's also a, a, a professor at, who teaches at uh, Technion and he's an activist. So <laughs> may the force be with you. Um, I'm an actually adjunct professor at uh, Technion, so uh, not a faculty member. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so I, I wanted to, um, um, well, let me just uh, switch to my, oh, I, okay, I, hold I, on. Oh, well, you found I'll let you it, do that. Yeah, I'll do it. Um, my bad. So I think, um, so um, I really relate, my, my, I'll try and be very quick. Um, I really appreciate uh, everybody who uh, stayed this late. Um, I know it's, it's, uh, it's a very high level and uh, intellectual effort, uh, some excellent uh, talks. Um, so uh, I, I'm kind of here with a hat of both uh, activist and as a financial engineer. And I really want to kind of bounce off of um, uh, Yoav's uh, point regarding trust. And I think that's really the, my, my talk here uh, is uh, aimed especially at uh, fintech investors and entrepreneurs here. Uh, in, in the Israeli ecosystem. And I want to encourage you, the, the point that I want you to take away from the, this talk is, is that I, I want to encourage you to, um, uh, to invest your time and your money in ventures that would actually solve uh, the real problems of the financial system. There are some, uh, some companies that, um, that do this, some fintechs that do that, but um, unfortunately, um, quite a bit of the effort I believe is going in the, in the wrong directions. So um, <clears throat> what are the financial system's functions? Really, they're, um, it's two things, payments and long-term um, savings and investments. In other words, transferring value from one place to another, from one person to another, and transferring value from the same person, from yourselves today, to your future self, and maybe your children. Um, and these are really, so these are two, two different functions. The um, payments are, are, are a big success um, in, in, terms of, um, in terms of the uh, uh, fintech innovation. So, uh, and many of these, many of these rep represent Israeli fintechs, you know, in fraud, companies like Forder, uh, Riskified, for those of you who know them, um, companies that do payments. Today, if I want to transfer, if I want to buy something uh, in China, Again, uh, Corona aside, and, and have uh, the product shipped to the U.S. I can do that pretty reliably, and, and you know it might take a few days. Uh, there are some frictions; it might cost me a couple of percent, but generally, it's a pretty well-solved problem. And, and um, again, it's going to become more and more efficient. It's clear that uh, the technology is, is improving. Um, what has been, I think, a little bit um, uh, less success, or where there, has been, there have been more challenges are um, in the worlds of savings and investments, long term especially. And I think that's where uh, FinTech really needs to, um, uh, as a society, uh, as a global society, that's where we need to uh, uh, put our efforts. And this is where I come, you know, my hat, both as an activist and as a financial engineer, my experience as a, as a risk manager. And by the way, I started out in JP Morgan. That's where I got my, uh, my training, and I, I did not see anything wrong there. So, uh, <laughs> How much did they pay you? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the companies that I mentioned here, uh, by the way, I, I'm an entrepreneur myself. I haven't received, I have no financial interest in any of the companies that I'm mentioning here. So uh, fair disclosure. This is, and I also am not necessarily familiar with all the details, so don't take this as investment advice. Um, you'll see a few companies later on. Um, so I think, in my opinion, the... Um, 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 I think this is a slightly older uh, version of my, um, of my talk, uh, but um, so I think um, essentially what, what um, um, the problems that uh, exist in the long term in the, um, in the investment and saving space are those of transparency, conflicts of interest, um, and centralization. And while there are fintechs that have been trying to address these problems, um, I think there's a long way to go. Um, so um, we can talk about blockchain. They came to address the issue of centralization. So they tried, you know, the uh, original um, 
uh, idea behind uh, Bitcoin was, you know, fiat currencies, they're uh, controlled by the state. How can we make this something that's more transparent, more democratic, uh, outside the banking system? Um, I think we all kind of followed what happened with, uh, with that. Um, it's too early to tell what blockchain would do, but for now, they haven't really solved that problem of centralization. Uh, the banking system is, has really not changed uh, in these years. Um, so it's, it's really a marginal, what, what, what crypto has done is really uh, kind of marginal. Um, P2P platforms for uh, lending, so things like uh, Lending Club, uh, Prosper in the US and Israel, we have uh, Blender, we have Tari, we have a few other uh, platforms. Those have largely been kind of swallowed by the financial, uh, by the financial sector as well. You, you, yeah, you can lend um, directly to people, but that's still on the margins. Most people don't, uh, don't borrow or uh, save in, those, in that way, and, they don't, and, and most people don't invest still through those P2P uh, platforms. And, and a lot of this has to do uh, with trust, and I think that's where FinTech can come in. Again, this is not to say they're not going to succeed. This is just to say they haven't yet succeeded. Um, and finally, and maybe this is the biggest problem, is the agency problem in investing. So the conflicts of interest, all the, the mediation, uh, that has not really uh, changed much or not changed enough in the, in the investment space. Um, so but what, 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 is the, uh, um, what is the social cost of this? So uh, every segment of society is paying the price. We have uh, young people, young adults, um, in the US especially, but I think this is true in other places as well. Uh, student debt has become a massive, massive bubble. 1.6 trillion uh, dollars just in the US. Uh, people spend their, young people spend years and years trying to crawl from under that. Uh, very high rates of bankruptcy. Uh, it's debt that cannot be shaked, shaken off. Um, if we look at, um, Families, working, working, uh, working middle class families, there's an affordability crisis. This is from uh, the Atlantic, uh, an article recently. You know, housing in many places, of course here in Tel Aviv, everybody knows this, uh, is unaffordable. It's becoming ext extremely hard to afford. Um, and then we have the retirement problem, which is a huge problem and growing very quickly as people live longer uh, with, very, with zero interest rates, even negative interest rates. People who um, have to move their, um, their investments into, um, uh, into high-grade bonds can earn vir vir virtually no interest and are at risk of outliving their savings. Um, and if, in fact, this is, um, I believe, some, some, uh, some uh, um, uh, polls have Americans more worried about uh, outliving their savings than actually dying, um, which is, uh, you know, it's, not, it's, it's funny, but it actually is not. Um, so the investment pipeline is still broken. We still have the concentration, lack of, tra lack of transparency, the conflicts of interest are still there, and there's the issue of debt. So we still, we're still a debt-driven uh, um, economy where we still have those debt cycles. And uh, here are a couple of examples for the Israeli crowd. You can, of course, recognize them. Um, and they're very different. So we have Delek, who you know, is, is, uh, you know, was leveraged and just borrowed more money after having uh, defaulted on or restructured uh, uh, debt just in the last financial crisis. And we have uh, Teva, which actually, you know, is, is not a financial company at all, but uh, had to um, uh, lay off many people and is in great trouble. I was just in their investor call yesterday, and they're still, their biggest problem is their debt uh, that they took on, not even regulation or the logistics or the, um, um, uh, or the um, uh, pipeline of, of drugs that they're developing. So, um, this is from uh, McKinsey, which of course, you know, McKinsey is not, they're not activists, they're, we know which, which side they're on, and they're, you know, they're, they recognize this uh, as a major issue. Um, CLOs, so the CDOs maybe are gone, uh, but instead we have now CLOs, which are, uh, that's, that's where all that debt, corporate debt goes on. So, some of the debt that was moved from the, fina from the financial system, from the banks, moved on to corporate balance sheets, such as Teva and such as other companies. Uh, and this, this is a major threat. Um, so, um, okay, so, so um, just to summarize it, this, this debt economy influences, on the one hand, hurts um, individuals at every generation. And on the other hand, in terms of the, the economy itself, the, the businesses, the corporates, uh, it creates a debt-fueled um, 
financial engineering of, of companies, which is, makes them a lot more fragile and, uh, makes, and hurts the economy in the long run. So, so these are all problems that have to do with the concentration, with the structure of the financial industry. And so now we come to where the fintechs come in and what they can do. And I, I do want to end with, you know, so I told you what the fintechs haven't done in this space, in the long-term investment savings space, but what they have done, uh, I, a couple of examples that I think have made a big difference and they happen to be Israeli uh, uh, fintechs are Lemonade and our, uh, our crowd. Um, again, I have no, no, connect, no financial interest in these companies, but I'm, I really like their, uh, their approach, not just technologically, but also they try to take out the conflicts of interest in the case of uh, Lemonade, but also our crowd where, where they invest alongside um, their, um, uh, their investors and they, um, uh, and they charge the investors rather than the, uh, they don't take money from the companies in which they invest. So, so I think part of that, you know, adding the transparency, realigning the, uh, the interest, that's, that's where I think uh, uh, FinTech needs to go. Um, and uh, again, thank you so much for, um, for uh, staying until this late. <laughs>